operating unallocated gold accounts on a fractional reserve basis. The world's biggest market for gold bullion by far is London, where gold is traded on an over-the-counter OTC basis via the London Bullion Market Association. This is a wholesale market and is not for retail investors. The minimum amount of gold traded in a single transaction is 1000 ounces. It is important to note that most of the OTC gold trading, over 95% of it, takes place using unallocated gold accounts. An unallocated gold account is an account gold traders can hold by a bank where no specific gold bars are set aside for them and the customer only has a general entitlement to a certain amount of gold that is hold in the vault of a bank. So claims to unallocated gold hold nothing more than paper claims to a general pool of gold that is owned by the bank that issues the unallocated gold accounts. The key point to understand here is that bullion bank customers that hold unallocated gold have no entitlement to the gold once the bank becomes insolvent. An allocated gold account, on the other hand, is an account opened when a customer requires a storage space for storing his unique gold bar. The customer wants his unique gold bar back and not some similar gold bar with another unique identification number printed on it. His gold bar has to be physically segregated from the West and he alone holds a property claim to this gold bar. The gold bar cannot be loaned out or handed it over to a third party and when the bank becomes insolvent, the customers of the bank that have allocated gold accounts can come to the vault and pick up their own gold bars. So now we know the differences between an allocated and unallocated gold account it is easy to see how banks could use unallocated gold accounts to run a fractional reserve scheme like they have grown accustomed to doing with fiat currencies. You see, the unallocated gold in the bank's vault is the bank's property. Therefore the bank can do with the gold as it pleases as long as it does not default on its liabilities towards the holders of unallocated gold accounts. And since 95% of all the gold traded on the London OTC takes place in the form of unallocated gold, and only a very small fraction of the unallocated gold ever leaves the vault, there's only a little chance getting caught holding less physical bullion than holding liabilities to customers to. So unallocated gold accounts are ideal for running a sustainable fractional reserve type gold scheme. We know our current banking system has derived from this practice, why should it be any wonder to us when the bankers holding the unallocated gold accounts on the London OTC market are running these accounts on a fractional reserve basis as well. So when the banks holding these unallocated gold accounts run a fractional reserve scheme with the gold they are holding, they artificially create an extra gold supply money can flow to. This way the market can pay for the same physical amount of gold twice or more and the gold price will be suppressed. 